Welcome back to New Day, everyone. It's a common threat facing many children dealing with food allergies. Students who suffer from a severe allergic reaction without the medicine that they need in sight or in close reach. Now, after children in Illinois and Virginia died after eating peanuts at school, obviously, and had an allergic reaction, the president has signed into law new incentives for schools to keep what we know as EpiPens on campus. This issue hitting close to home for the president after he revealed his daughter Malia suffers from the very same allergy. For more on all of this, let's bring in Dr. Jennifer Cottle to talk about it. So nice to see you, doctor. It's good to see you. This was the first time the president has talked about the this peanut allergy that Malia has. It had us a lot of us talking once again about it seems that more and more children are having more and more severe allergies. Are you seeing that right. walk into your office? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we know that in the U.S. about four to six percent of children have food allergies, but we also know that this number is rising. And in fact, the CDC reported that between 1997 and 2007, the prevalence of reported food allergies increased 18 percent for children under the age of 18. So yes, it's, it's, it's a widely held belief that food allergies in particular are increasing. Why is that? That's actually quite frightening. Right. It is quite frightening, and it really raises a lot of questions about how we manage it and things like that. But yeah. why is this? You ask a Great question. Food allergies and allergies in general, allergic reactions, are very complicated. And they generally involve an interplay not only with the environment and what we're exposed to, but also our immunology, how our immune system works, um, and in, in genetics and even family history. So there's a number of reasons possibly why that's the case. So those who say that we just recognize it more, you know, like I didn't grow up, I never heard of a peanut mm -hmm. allergy, now you got them in every classroom my kids are in. That is naive. It is actually going up. This is real. It's not just more awareness. No, the, the numbers are going up. Absolutely. We're seeing more and more food allergies. And remember, we are more aware, too. I mean, and that's a good thing. And I think that's one of the things that this law is really going to help us do. Remember, when we talk about allergic reactions and anaphylaxis in particular, because that's really where EpiPens come in, mm -hmm. yeah. we're talking about is making schools safer places for kids with severe allergies. Anaphylaxis can be deadly. Uh, you can get shortness of... Short yes. time, right? You We're need that not minutes. just in the hallway. We're you talking need it. minutes. Sometimes when children are exposed to something that they're allergic to, um, they can get shortness of breath, wheezing, uh, nausea, vomiting, passing out, even death, and that can occur within minutes. So, uh, so this is really important. And it can be just even in the environment. I thought about it today. I had a multigrain waffle with peanut butter, and I thought, what if the people in the car with me <laughs> are allergic? And I have even asked. It makes you thoughtful of the fact that. It can just be in the atmosphere, correct? It, it, it really does make you thoughtful, and it really raises awareness about this. Keep in mind, though, that young people, people, all people, um, don't just have to have anaphylactic reactions to food allergies. Also, bee stings. This is something yeah. huge. Uh, medications, even latex. So this, this, this awareness that we're having about allergic reactions and EpiPens is not just food. It really extends beyond I have that. to ask you about this fascinating sure. case. We're seeing stories about this 10-year-old boy. He's fighting leukemia. He gets a bone marrow transplant, and obviously as part of his treatment but kind of a surprise result is also that he's cured of a severe peanut allergy that he had uh, obviously before the surgery. Have you ever heard of this before? Well, I think it's fascinating. I really do. And I think we're starting to see a few case reports sort of pop up here and there about either transplants or situations like this where allergies have either come or gone after the uh, after the surgery. Is and there any easy science behind that that we non-doctors could understand? <laughs> easy science, no. Doctors, <laughs> we're still trying to understand this. But I think this is really interesting and it's fascinating and hopefully it's going to give us uh, and researchers clues about how we go forth. And do we also, I've heard people say, oh, I used to be allergic to something yes. when I was a child. Do we grow out of that? Yes, that's a, that's a great question, actually, because I get this question a lot in my office as people wonder. Or I have, um, actually, I've had some adult patients come in recently that have developed um, allergies to fruit. Yes. And in their adulthood, they never had them before. Yes, you can grow out of certain allergies, and some people do, some people don't. That's still up in, in the air about who does and who doesn't. But you can also develop allergies later in life as well. So that's something to keep Especially in mind. Especially seasonal ones and external things as opposed to food allergies, mm -hmm. right? Well, food allergies in, as well. You can develop food allergies later on in life, and children can sometimes grow out of certain food allergies as well. So it happens with food allergies as well. All right. All allergies, annoying yeah. and horrible, to <laughs> yes. say the least. <laughs> Thanks, doctor. Great, Great to see you. Thank you.